homework time. Yes, happy, happy homework time is here yet again. Let's begin in the right way. Let's draw our name down at top of the paper. I'll put my name and you put yours. And then let's take a moment, do things right. Write down today's date. All right, today you write the actual date where and when you are in this wonderful world of ours. Each rectangle represents one. So we're looking at number one, A through D. All those rectangles is, each one is one whole. Good. All right, so the shaded fractions have been decomposed into smaller units. And we've been doing this, so you're familiar with how this works. That, uh, that horizontal dashed line in each of these, and two here, that's the decomposition. Express the equivalent fractions in a number sentence using multiplication. The first one has been done for you. This actually isn't so bad. We, we had some gruesome homeworks a few back, but uh, I think we'll kind of cruise through tonight. So look at this first one. We started off with two out of three shaded, two-thirds. And then with the decomposition making two rows, which is the reason why, and this is essential, that line there made two rows. And that's why we're multiplying by two halves there, okay? We didn't just come up with that two out of nowhere, or we always do two or something like that. No, th there's a reason for it. Um, and that's how we found the equivalent for six. See how it works? So let's look at the next one. What did we start with? Well, one, two, three out of four. So we started with three fourths. And now let's set up. We know what the multiplication looks like. We did this on, on the last one as well. So let's set it all up, ready to go. All right, so we started with one row, right? And then this one line of decomposition created two rows. And that's why we're multiplying by two halves here. And two halves, I told you I'm keep telling you this, is equal to one. So we're changing the form, not the value of the number. Um, so 3 times 2 is 6, and 4 times 2 is 8. Double check with the model. Do we have 6 out of 8 parts shaded now? Yes, indeed we do. All right, so let's go on to C. We started with 1, 2, 3, 4 out of 5 shaded. So I'm going to write mine up here. So we started with 4 fifths shaded. And let's set up the multiplication because we know what it looks like. Told you, we're, look, at, look at us cruising through like pros here. Okay, and so with two lines of decomposition now, what we've, what we've partitioned it into is three rows, okay? One, two, three. And that's why, my little friends, we're multiplying by three-thirds here because we created three rows. All right, and when you do the multiplication, you get 12 fifteenths. And now double-check... And this is an important step. Always answer, always ask yourself rather, does my answer make sense? Do we now have 12 out of 15 shaded? Yeah, 4, 8, 12 out of 5, 10, 15 are shaded. If you had mistakenly done times 2 halves, let's say, you would have gone 8 tenths and you would have looked at your model and said, that's not 8 tenths. Okay, so let's look at this one. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 out of 8 were originally shaded, so 7 eighths. And let's set up the multiplication. We know what that looks like. And we just have one line of decomposition here creating two rows, and that's why, because we have two rows, we're multiplying by two halves. So that gives us 14 sixteenths. Very good. 14 sixteenths, double check, look, 7 and 7 are 14, 8 and 8 are 16, 14 sixteenths is correct. Look at that, moving on. And number two, yeah, we're just doing the same thing, except that we have to draw our own lines of decomposition, and we're going to decompose both of these shaded fractions into twelfths, okay? And then and then do the same thing with the number sentence with multiplication. So let's, let's do the decomposition for both of these. Let's kind of do both of these at once. Um, to make sure we're thinking straight here. So here we're starting with 3 out of 6, right? So what's the relationship between 6 and 12? It's times 2, right? So we need two rows here. And so my line of decomposition, my little dashed, happy little dashed line here, 
I just need one of them to create two rows. Do I have 12 parts now? Yes. Now, let's jump over to B, even though we're not done with A. Now I have four, I'm starting with fourths here, two out of four, two fourths. What's the relationship between four and 12? It's times three. So that means I need three rows, and to do so, I need, of course, to draw two horizontal dashed lines of decomposition. And double check yourself. I always like to. So we have 4, 8, 12. Okay, so we, now we, we've done that first step for both of these, the decomposition. So now let's see. We started here, we already said, with 3 sixths. And we can set up the multiplication. We know what it looks like. And we know, in fact, over here, we know we want to end up with 12s, don't we? And we already said uh, it's a factor of 2, right? because 6 times 2 is 12, and of course we're going to do the same with the numerator, so we're multiplying by a value of 1, um, and so that gives us 6 twelfths, and does that make sense? We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 out of 12 shaded, yeah, it agrees with the model, it makes sense. And now over here, we started with what? That's right, we already said it, 2 out of 4, 2 fourths. Let's set up the multiplication, we know what it looks like. And Similarly here, we can, over in this fraction that we end up with, we know we want to end up with 12s. 12s. Um, so what's the factor again? It's a factor of 3. 4 times 3 is 12. And we'll do the same thing to numerator so that we're multiplying by 3 thirds, or 1. And that would give us, for a numerator over here, yes, that's right, 6. And does that match 2 for 6? Yes, it does. And you notice, just a little side note, a little bonus here, that all of these 3 6, 6 twelfths, 2 fourths, and again, 6 twelfths, that's kind of funny, isn't it? All of those are equal to 1 half, aren't they, right? Aren't half of them shaded here, and half of them are shaded here, and even after the decomposition, 6 out of 12, 6 out of 12? Amazing mathematics. Moving on. Well, here in number three, I went kind of a step ahead of us to uh, get it set up so you didn't have to watch me fumble around here. Um, so what I did was I were to draw area models to prove that the following number sentences are true. So the first one here were to prove that one-third equals two-sixths. So I drew my uh, rectangle, which represents one whole, and three partitions, one of which is shaded in. There's my one-sixth to start with. B, I did over here, here's starting with two-fifths, there's my two out of five, two-fifths. Uh, C, I have over here, starting with five-sevenths, one, two, three, four, five out of six, seven. And then D, I did up above right here, there's my three-sixths to start with. Okay, so, so now we can just go through and do our partitioning. So let me get a dashed line. Okay, now, in, in A here, we're going from one-third to two-sixths. What's the relationship between three and six? It's times two, so we need two rows for which we can draw one line. Did it, did it, did it, did it, did Boom! And guess what? That's it. That's the area model that proves that one-third equals two-sixths. Pretty slick, huh? All right, so now again, look at B, where we have uh, two-fifths equals four tenths. What's the relationship between five and 10? Again, it's a factor of two times two. So we need two rows. So that will be one line splitting it down the middle. And look, do we now have four out of 10? We do, look at that. This area model proves that two fifths equals four tenths. Isn't this great? And again, in C, it's a factor of two, isn't it? We're going from sevenths to fourteenths, and so it's a factor of two, and so we need to create two rows. Da -da 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 -da. Boom. And now look, do you have ten out of fourteen shaded instead of five out of seven? Yes, you do, so that means it's right. And now look at um, D, three-sixths equals nine-eighteenths. What's the relationship between six and eighteen? Ah, it's a factor of three. So we need three rows here. Okay, so we need to draw two lines within this rectangle 
to create three rows. And then, as always, we check ourselves. We started with one, two, three out of six. Do we now have nine out of 18? Well, three, six, nine out of 18. It works. By gum, it works. All right, well, let's uh, jump on to number four. And perhaps in number three, you're wondering, like, hey, where's the Matthew? <laughs> where's the multiplication of fractions? Well, here it is. It's all here in number four. So in this one, now we're going to use multiplication to create equivalent fractions. No area models. Look at that. So let's take a look at this first one. Now, we can create any sort of equivalent fraction we like. So we can take this two-thirds here, and let's set up our multiplication. Oh, gosh, I'm still on the dash line. All right, there we go. All right, so take that two-thirds and draw the long fraction bar so we could set up the multiplication, right? And now let's think. Well, we could go nice and easy and just multiply it by two halves. Let's do something a little more interesting now. Let's, let's go for five-fifths because that will give us an equivalent fraction. As long as what we're multiplying by here, as long as the numerator and denominator are the same, it has a value of one, we're changing the form, not the value of that two-thirds. So we multiply here, two times five is 10, and three times five is 15. Notice, it works, right? You see how it works? That two-thirds equals 10 fifteenths. In fact, we could even just write that to I don't know that we need to do it for everyone, but just so you can see what I'm talking about here, that these are equivalent fractions. It's the same amount of cake, we just cut it up into smaller pieces. We decomposed it. Let's do that now with 5 sixths. Set up your multiplication. All right. And now we could do any sort of factor here. We could put 127 if we wanted. We could put anything as long as we do 127 127ths, but let's not be quite so cruel to ourselves. Let's go with three, okay? So three-thirds, we'll do a factor of three. Um, as long as these two numbers are the same, it has a value of one, and you're not changing the value of the fraction, you're creating an equivalent. So five times three, <coughs> excuse me, is 15. By the way, do you like my scarf? Comment below. Six times three is 18. My son made it for me. He's awesome. So uh, 15 eighteenths. So let's, let's go ahead and write that out. Come on, don't be lazy on me. I see you reaching for that skip ahead 10 seconds button. Don't do it. All right, so there we go. So there's our equivalency. So now with C and D, what do you notice about them? Yeah, the numerator is more than the denominator. It's an improper fraction. Therefore, its value is greater than one. But does that really change anything in what we're doing here? Uh, no, it doesn't. Actually, not, not in this case. It doesn't change a thing. So we're starting with six-fifths. We can still just multiply this by some uh, value of one and get an equivalent fraction. So let's see, we did three and five. Let's go with four. What do you say? Let's do four-fourths. So six times four is 24. Aren't you glad you learned all those facts earlier in the year? And five times four? 20. Okay, so let's go ahead and write them out for all of them because I think your teacher will appreciate that you're going the extra mile here. That's six fifths equals 24 twentieths. All right, and lastly, with 10 eighths, let's set up the multiplication. That should be the long fraction bar. And now here, let's do the cheese out and do a factor of two. Okay, so two halves. And again, this being an improper fraction changes nothing in what we're doing here. 10 times 2, of course, is 20. And you know that 8 times 2 is 16. So what we're talking about here is that 10 eighths is equal to 20 sixteenths. And isn't that true? Say yes. Yes, it is. All right, let's go finish out homework time with number 5. All right, and number 5 is great. I really like number 5 because here... We have to take everything we've learned that we've just been kind of practicing and actually put it to use. It's like if you were learning trumpet and you're learning scales and notes and then you put it together to play a song. This is the song we're playing here. Are these 
true number sentences. We are to determine according to our directions, and we're to correct those that are false by changing the right-hand side of the number sentence. So, for example, in this first one, we've, it says 2 thirds equals 4 ninths. Here's how we can do these, because you need a strategy for these. Okay, let's write out the multiplication. 2 thirds equals. Now, we know we're going to ninths, right? Okay, so let's, let's jot that down. Well, that's a factor of 3, right? Because 3 times 3 is 9, so we'll multiply 2 thirds by 3 thirds. Okay, and it has to be the, the same there. I keep saying that for a good reason, because I do see a lot of fourth graders will say, well, 2 thirds times 2 thirds. That's changing the value. That's not finding equivalent fraction. That's something else. All right, so 2 times 3 now is 6. Ah, so 2 thirds equals not 4 ninths, but 6 ninths. So I'm actually going to write for all of these true or false. Um, and your teacher will appreciate that you're putting that, all right? So do it with me. Uh, so two-thirds is actually equal to six-ninths. You see how we can do these? Let's look at the next one. So we're starting with five-sixths. We'll set up the multiplication. We know what it looks like. And we're going to twelfths, all right? So what's that a factor of? Six times two is twelve. So we're going to write two halves here. We need to have a value of 1. I'm going to keep emphasizing that. And so what do we end up with the numerator here? That's right, 10. Oh, so that one is true. All right, and we're going to write true. Make sure it's clear that we understand what we're doing here. Now let's look at C. We're starting with 3 fifths. We're proposing that that's equal to 6 fifteenths. So we know we want to go to fifteenths. What's that a factor of? 5 times what is 15? Uh, 3. So we're going to multiply 3 fifths times 3 thirds. It, those must be the same when we're finding equivalent fractions. That's, I'm going to keep saying that until you are hearing it in your sleep. And so what's our numerator? 3 times 3 is 9. Ah, so it's not 6 fifteenths. It's 9 fifteenths. This one is false because it should say, and we're going to write it out to make clear, that we know what we're doing. 3 fifths is equal to 9 fifteenths. Now, look in D, what do you notice right off? Yes, it's an improper fraction, okay? Does that really change anything we're doing with finding an equivalent fraction? Not in the least, it really doesn't. Um, so we're going to start with 7 fourths. I'll draw the long fraction bar, bar set up our multiplication. Beautiful. All right, and we're going to twelfths. So what's it a factor of? Four times what is twelve? Ah, it's a factor of three. So we'll take that seven-fourths and multiply it by three-thirds. And yes, I'm going to say it again. Your numerator and denominator need to be the same here, so it's equal to one. If you multiply seven-fourths by, say, two-thirds or one-third or four-third, you are changing the value. You are not finding equivalent fractions. But when we're finding equivalent fractions, those need to be the same. It needs to be equal to 1. And so 7 times 3 is 21. Ah, and that's what they have there. So I'm going to write true. And look what you've gone and done. You completed another homework time. Congratulations. Go have some fun. Eat cupcakes, whatever. And I will see you again next time. It is once again homework time.